Hello, in this video, we're gonna look at lesson 9.5 on completing the square. Completing the square is just another method that we can use to solve quadratic equations. The essential question that we'll answer is how do you solve a quadratic equation by completing the square? In day one, we're just going to learn how to complete the square. And then in day two, we'll learn how to actually solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. So let's go ahead and get started. To understand what it means to complete the square, it's helpful to visualize it using algebra tiles. Because with algebra tiles, we can actually complete the square and turn x squared plus 6x into a perfect square. You've probably seen algebra tiles before. If not, I'll teach you how to use them. With algebra tiles, there's three main parts. You'll have see a blue square that's x squared. And if it's x squared, each dimension is x because x times x makes x squared. Then there are green rectangles that are the same height as the x squared box so that this dimension is x and then it's one wide. x times one makes the x. And then the last piece that you'll see is a one tile. And the one tile is gonna be the same width as the x tile and its dimensions are going to be one by one. We have a link to virtual algebra tiles in the 9.5 folder on Schoology. So let's use these tiles to model the trinomial x squared plus 6x. Go to the 9.5 folder on Schoology and click on the virtual algebra tiles link. You can either use the algebra tiles right here on the Schoology page, or you can open it up in a new tab by clicking this link box. I'm going to open it up in a new tab so it gets a little bigger for the video. There we go. I'd recommend that you add the labels to your algebra tiles. So if you check this box, that'll add the labels, and now we can see the x squared, the x, and the ones tiles. Let's begin by modeling x squared plus 6x. So you just grab one of the x squareds and move it to the board. And then I'm going to grab an X, and then a shortcut to get five more X's is just to use the copy button. So if you click on that X and then the copy button, I'm going to copy them over to the right. And now you can see that I have an X squared plus 6X. We want to complete the square, so we need to rearrange these tiles into a square. Now the blue X squared is already a square, so we need to take these green X's and we need to cut them in half. So let's move three of them off to the side here. And we're going to use those three tiles to build our square. To build our square, though, we need to turn these sideways. You can either grab new X's or you can just click the rotate button right here, and that'll turn them the other way. All right, so I'm moving three of these down here. And now you can see that I've rearranged them to form a square. Now we just need to fill in this part right here with the ones tiles. So grab a one tile, and then to copy it over, you can click it and just copy it until you have the entire square filled in. You'll notice now that we have x squared plus 6x plus 9, since there are 9 1 tiles. That means the number that completes the square is c equal 9. So we just completed the square right there. x squared plus 6x plus c, we just found that that c value has to be nine. Then if we wanna factor it, we can look at the dimensions of the square. Remember that the blue x squared is x by x. And the green x tiles are x tall and they're one across. So this is one right here. And since there are three of them, that would be x plus three here and x plus three there. So our perfect square, x squared plus 6x plus 9, factors to the square of a binomial, which is x plus 3 quantity squared. Remember, x plus 3 squared means the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. So here I've taken all of the information that we just saw with the algebra tiles, and I've just drawn it out in the notes packet. So if you want to copy that down, you can pause the video right now and add that to your notes. I also just want to talk a little bit about where that nine comes from because there is a shortcut here. 
remember that what we did was we took the 6x right here and we divided that by 2. So that made the 3x. And then each of these is 3 by 3. Well, 3 times 3 makes the 9. So to complete the square, this c value right here is the b value divided by 2 squared. And that 6 there is just my b. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared makes 9. You can also see that the b over 2 is in our factored form. The process that we just completed in example 1 with the algebra tile was called completing the square. Completing the square is a method to solve quadratic equations by rewriting it as a sum or difference of a perfect square. This process is going to be useful when the quadratic is not factorable and when a is equal to 1. When a is equal to 1, that just means that there's no number in front of the x squared term. So it's just a 1x squared. The shortcut that we can use to complete the square is that to make x squared plus bx into a perfect square, you add b over 2 squared, where b is just the number in front of the x term. So you take that, you divide it by 2, and you square it, and that value right there, that's the c value that we just found in the previous example. And then it's going to factor to x plus b over 2 quantity squared. This shortcut can be used to complete the square without needing to use algebra tiles. You're still welcome to use the algebra tiles if you'd like. This process is just going to be a little bit quicker now that we see what we did with those algebra tiles to make the square. We took the x term, the bx term, we cut it in half, so b divided by 2, and then we squared that to see how many 1's tiles we needed. So we're really just adding b over 2 squared. Then that factors into a perfect square, x plus whatever b over 2 was before we squared it. Now let's use this shortcut to complete the square. For each of these questions, we want to find the value of c that makes the expression a perfect square, and then write the expression as the square of a binomial. The first step is to identify the b value. The b is the number in front of the x. So here for part a, our b value is 10. Then we need to take b over 2 and square it. So that would be 10 divided by 2 squared. We can simplify 10 divided by 2 to 5, and 5 squared is 25. So the first part of our answer is c equal 25. Then we can rewrite the expression by replacing that c with 25. So we have x squared plus 10x plus 25, and that can be factored to the square of a binomial. The completed square looks like this, x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared, which was 25, and that will become x plus b over 2 squared. So we have the x and the squared, and then that b over 2 is what we had here before we squared it. So my b over 2 was 5, it's positive, so x plus 5 quantity squared is our factored form. This process also works if the b is a negative number. Like this problem here, the b value is negative 24. If we do b divided by 2 and we square it, we get negative 24 divided by 2 squared. Simplify negative 24 divided by 2 to negative 12. And then when you square negative 12, if you're going to use your calculator, make sure you put parentheses around it. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong answer. Because a negative 12 times a negative 12 should be a positive 144. Whenever you square something, you'll always get a positive number. C will always be positive. Here it's 144. And now we can rewrite that as x squared minus 24x plus 144, and that is going to factor to x plus b over 2 squared. 
This time, though, my b over 2 was negative 12. So you'll see that when the b term is a negative number, you'll have a minus sign here, x minus 12 quantity squared. And that's our factored form. Let's try two more here. Um, problem C, we have a b value of negative 8. And we can start off by doing b divided by 2 squared. So that's negative 8 divided by 2, quantity squared. Simplify negative 8 divided by 2 to negative 4. And when we square negative 4, we get positive 16. So C is 16 is the first part of our answer. That means we can rewrite this as x squared minus 8x plus 16. And we know that that will factor to x something squared. And that something is going to be what b over 2 was before we factored it. So here, that's x minus 4 quantity squared. Now, this process works too if b is an odd number, like 7. If we do b equals 7 here, and we do our 7 divided by 2 quantity squared, when you simplify that, just square the 7 and square the 2. You're squaring both the numerator and the denominator. I want you to leave it in fraction form, so please do not rewrite 7 over 2 as 3.5. You're going to leave it as 7 over 2 squared, and then just square the numerator and square the denominator. And now 7 squared is 49, and 2 squared is 4. So that makes the C value here 49 over 4. That's the first part of the answer. Now we can go ahead and factor the trinomial here. So we have x squared plus 7x plus c, which is 49 over 4. And that is going to factor to x plus b over 2 squared. Now remember, the b over 2 was what we had before we squared it. So our b over 2 is just 7 over 2. And we're still going to leave that as a fraction. So your factored form would be x plus 7 over 2 quantity squared. Here's two try now problems for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and give this a try. Please pause the video now. All right, here are your solutions to the try now. On number one, uh, b divided by 2 squared was 22 divided by 2, so 11 squared gives us c equal 121. Then it factors to x plus 11 squared. Number two, we had a fraction here for b over 2. Negative 9 divided by 2 doesn't divide evenly, so just square the negative 9 and square the 2 to get c equal 81 over 4. Then the um, trinomial factors to x plus b over 2, but that b over 2 was negative 9 over 2. So you'll see x minus 9 over 2 squared is the factored form. And this concludes lesson 9.5 day 1. Thanks for watching. Bye.